Gender and uh, the future of the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs is now a, a little unclear after <laughs> Dean Pay yesterday quit his role as head coach. Pay decided it was time to leave after being informed by the club they were in the market for a new coach in 2021. Um, so, have we figured out yet why the Bulldogs decided that Dean Pay wasn't the answer? Oh, I think because of uh, all this talk about <clears throat> them being the family clubs of fraud. I think that uh, they brought him in under this notion that they're going to make him uh, part of the family club. He's going to regenerate their DNA. And, yeah, what happened was eventually, essentially, <coughs> excuse me, the, the Bulldogs said to him that they're getting all this interest from outside managers and other coaches and that they thought it was only fair to go out and see what's there. And pay to his credit, said, well, if that's, that's what you're thinking, then clearly there's not a place here for me. I'm out. I mean, having watched the Bulldogs play this year, and I have to admit, that performance on the weekend was miserable mm. against the Broncos. I mean, are they, are they looking at current form and <coughs> basing it on the fact that... Uh, ben, they're I guess an ordinary side that lost their best player, their best performer this year in Adam Elliott. The, 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 look, I know Luke Thompson came in and Kieran Foran's playing for them, but I tell you what, beyond that and perhaps Tolman and Josh Jackson... They're a reserve grade side. There's not there's not much talent there. Well, let's have a and look. They we, pushed we, him into a corner, though, too. They, they, the Bulldogs pushed him into the corner where a proud man, what's he going to do? How long do you cop it for? 100%. At what point do you say, you know what, guys? You're on your own now. Let's all have a look the at some of those names. So yeah. all these players... Now, James Graham has a little asterisk, right? Because when he got... When Dean Pay walked into the club, James Graham had just been let go because of salary cap problems. The other five players there, four of whom are test players and one of whom played Origin last year, were all at the club and not through Dean Pay's decision making, but through trying to get the club under the salary cap, they let those players go. You try and get those six players back in Canterbury now and see how much better they're going. Oh, I agree. And, and then after all that he'd been through... They're spruiking at the moment that there's going to be $3 million to spend next year. And instead of giving someone like him an opportunity to do it, the consideration is you're going to bring in another young coach yeah. without the proven credentials and give him the opportunity to have a crack at it. So, so would, we, sense? would we agree, looking at some of those names and based on the roster that we saw take the field on the weekend, that there's probably not so many coaches in this competition that would have the Bulldogs going much better than they're going at the I, moment? I, I, well, Bring back Jack Gibson. He's not going to get. He's not going to get the Bulldogs going any better. The one thing, the one thing the Bulldogs can look for, is the fact that with the talent that they provided Dean Pay, he had them trying. They they were they were playing to the best of their ability. And that, that's that's not on him. That they that they don't have the talent. Up until last weekend, you're 100 yeah. percent right. The week earlier, they were as good as they could have been. Yep. So was walking away immediately the right move for pay? I think? love it. Yeah? I love it. I, I just think... Oh, I'm really disappointed in the Bulldogs. They're a club that's, for three years now, they've told us how they're going to get these family values back in the club. They've just shafted him. They, they've done nothing in the three years to, to support his job as coach. And, and, and I say this to, to Trent Barrett, who I like and I think has got ability as a coach, I would go into the job under, uh, under a warning. Because he, T Trent Barrett got out of Manly, OK, because the club had failed to live up to some promises, OK? But he left the Manly team that had Jake Travojevic, Tom Travojevic, Daly Cherry Evans, Adam Fanua Blake, Marty Tapao, Dylan Walker, and he's going to go into this rabble where, again, they're making promises where this new board and the new administration so far have been unable to deliver anyone beyond Dylan Napa, who came to them after the, the Roosters gradually eased him out of their club, and, and in the past week, Luke Thompson. Because that, that's the latest news, right? James Hooper filed a story this afternoon starting Trent Barrett is firming to get the Bulldogs He's job. He's days away from getting the job. Three-year contract? Yes. Uh, I mean, I... I think there would have been other serious contenders, maybe Anthony Griffin. It uh, makes you wonder if, if they've done all their homework, doesn't it? Because if Dean Pay supposedly wasn't doing a good job, who, el who else at the club is doing a good job? How do you get them right? Are, are the board doing a good job? Are the administration that haven't got a major sponsor at the moment doing a good job? And if you're replacing a coach that you didn't believe could bring the drag the players 
to your club that you perhaps needed, is going and signing another unproven coach the answer to your problems? So let's just start with the problems. What, what, what lies in wait? For Trent Barrett, specifically. The problem, problem is this, Ben, and, and this is what we've seen in recent times. The problem is you've got a factionalised board, OK? Now, you've got Lynn Anderson, who's the chair, uh, the chair of the club, and then you've got George Curry, who's the, the, the money man at the club. And they are in opposite camps, and they are having a, a bitter war with each other, and they're fighting for control of the club. Now, the problem what's happened is, and we've seen this in recent times, where Craig Bellamy na Bellamy's name's been thrown up, the Wayne Bennett slash Mick Ennis option's been thrown up. These are the factions within the club throwing up these options so if they land the big fish okay we got Craig Belling we signed him they can then say to to the voters we're the ones who got Craig Bellamy in and then win power of the board so that the board is is split they are not getting on self-interest rules self-interest rules and, and and this is why I say that Trent Barrett the tr problem not only Trent Barrett if, who I believe will get the job very shortly but if it's not Trent Barrett, whoever comes in next year, if they do not win immediately, then the faction that was not responsible for bringing in whoever the new coach is will sit there after six rounds Guys, going, they go to not work. our fault, it's and, their and that's fault, not and then it's on again. Either, because you've also got, like, we've said it here before, if, you, if you're going to put the pressure on a young coach to come in and take control, surely you've got to surround him with the right experience. Have they got the right chief executive there <laughs> to bring in a young coach? Well, this is, Have they got the right football manager in Steve Price this is a, this to bring in a young th coach? This is a, a young board. I mean, they've only been in charge for a couple of years. Uh, you are right, the GM of football, Steve Price, this is his first crack at this particular role. He hasn't won a comp being a GM of football. Managed a salary cap. A and Andrew Hill, this is his first stint as a CEO of an NRL club. So together there's this collective, let's call it naivety, that inexperience and, and inexperience and in terms of assembling a list, attracting talent, because at the end of the day, you, you said it before, Crawls, is right now the Bulldogs are a club that need to get into the market and buy franchise but, players. But, I'm talking about ben, players that demand 900000 a million dollars, $1.2 million. When, you, when you're sitting out there looking at the Bulldogs and the rabble that they are at the moment in the boardroom and a rookie coach coming in, do you feel confident that is a marquee player, that's where you want to but, no, finish your, no, your and, career. And you know what the result of that is? The result of that is they get themselves back in the problem hmm. they're just about to get out of. Because to get players who are going to come in and change the environment within the club, at the moment, given they have nothing to offer except dollars, they're going to have to pay overs to get guys in. So, so a $500,000 player says, I'll go there for seven hundred, And an $800,000 player says, I'll go there for a million. And they're going to have to pay it to get those players into the club. And then once they do that, their salary cap then bent out of shape. And then down the line, they're going to have problems again. And let's not forget where we are in the season. Like, we're not even at the halfway point of this season. And the coach has walked out. The head coach and his assistant have left. Steve Georgialis takes over on his pat. Hmm. And you're talking about Barrett, who potentially might not want to leave until the end of the season. How's that yeah. going to work? How, yeah. can you, how can you allow that to happen? Because that's what they've effectively done. Yeah. Alright, well, Bulldog star playmaker Kieran Foran spoke with the media today. Uh, let's have a listen. We all turned up this morning, um, obviously only knowing what was reported in the media um, late yesterday. So, yeah, we were notified to head to an area to have a quick meeting uh, to be told of the events that had transpired this morning and late, late last evening regarding Dean and the club. And then uh, Dean himself uh, came in um, after that and, um, and spoke to all the players and all the staff. It's been a difficult morning here this morning, I think for everyone involved. Dean's been a huge part of this this club for the the last few years and poured everything into it. And I know from a from a player's point of view, you know, we can't we can't thank him enough for for the support that he's shown to all of us over the years. There was never any feeling that such events were going to take place. Yeah, it caught everyone um, definitely by by surprise this morning. How big an effect was the noise about the coach and the board having on the team? Look, it's it's always in the background, I guess. You know, I can't say that, that that is responsible for the results that we've been given, but it's there. Yeah, it would be great if it wasn't, but at the end of the day, you know, this is rugby league. This is the game that we play and, and there is going to be outside noise regarding those sort of decisions and 
look, as I said, as hard as it's been, um, we've got to, we've got to get on with the job at hand. And you know, Steve George Arliss will, will take the interim role. He coached the Canterbury Cup side deep into the finals. And he's obviously been helping Dean out with the assistance role for the last couple of seasons. So, look, he's he's a guy that, that understands the club. He's coached a lot of the players in this roster, either in Canterbury Cup or, or as an assistant role with Dino. So, I know he's he's just going to um, have to jump into it and, and do absolutely everything he can to, to help us turn this year around. I think Kieran Foran there, speaking in line with the man he is, committed to Dean Pay, uh, committed to Steve George Arliss, committed to the cause of the club. But the truth of it is that they have a massive rebuild in front of them. So two questions. In, in terms of playing talent, who, who do they target and how do they get them? 